Have you ever noticed that you can always at all times 100% see your nose? Like anywhere you go, if you're walking around, if you open or close one eye, you can always see your nose even with both eyes open. And so technically it's always obstructing your vision. And that's the advantage that you receive when you read books. You get to understand things that you don't see in your normal day-to-day -day life that are hindering you from achieving what you want to achieve. And you would have never noticed unless somebody pointed it out for you. So we're gonna go down this list of the five books that really impacted my life. These aren't the only ones, but these are just five that I wanna share let's get into it book number one is going to be smart cuts smart cuts is exactly what it sounds like it's taking shortcuts in life that are smart and ethical and this book talks about uh, many many ways and how businesses or people accomplish certain things that you would assume that would take a long time and they did it in a fraction of the time presidents in the united states for example they have had less and less qualifications on paper and they've also had a lot less time in office but yet they're also getting elected much younger in their life over 100 years ago making millions and billions of dollars have actually taken people decades to make but yet ebay did it in three so a lot of people refer to life as a game of chess and if you know how to play chess you know that it can actually take a long long time to actually finish one match now that's not the case all the time the better you get the faster you can beat your opponents but that's because you've taken the time and experience to go through all those chess matches in other words it still takes a long time to get really good at it but that can be altered if you get a mentor and that talks about that in this book but it also mentioned how even though if you have a mentor you're not necessarily guaranteed to succeed so i see this book as like learning all those chess moves really really fast so you have a ton of options when it comes to problem solving in your life one of my favorite examples in this book is actually the paperclip example as to how a group of kids uh, would play a game and they start off with the paperclip and it's called bigger or better now what you have to do is you have to go around the neighborhood and you have to trade with uh, someone knock on the door and say hey do you have something that's bigger or better than this paperclip and essentially it would take a couple tries but after that they would trade to a pencil to a stick of gum uh, and then you know to a stapler and then eventually they would build up to these massive items and you start to think wow like these kids didn't go out and work for money to buy what they wanted they just traded bigger or better and they didn't have to spend a dollar now when you take a step back and you think wow how can i achieve my goals without actually going the typical route you could really start to take these smart cuts that i'm telling you right here like for example there's one person who did do this exact same method he went from i think it was a paper clip to literally his dream house it took him like a year and a half to do it but he did it with just a paper clip starting off which is insane but this is why i recommend smart cuts i love this book so much and it really just makes me think outside the box definitely something i struggle with sometimes and i think if you have something it doesn't have to be a business it could be just anything in your life it can really show you a lot of chess moves that it can help you beat life a lot faster than going through the whole course of it now have you ever heard the term if you're the smartest man in the room you're in the wrong room the next book i'm talking about here is the magic of thinking big and this is definitely a classic it actually holds a, a special place in my heart it's the first book that i was actually given to by my mentor and got me into reading once i read this my mind literally opened up and it made me actually start thinking big but it's not the cliche big you're thinking about it's about thinking outside of the box different to how we just mentioned in the book smart cuts we're definitely looking outward and looking as to how we can uh, solve problems in different manners but the magic of thinking big solves these problems internally that we might have doubts in. Now, starting off with realizing that we need to create our environment around us. This is why I brought up the example of being in that room. One of the things that the book talks about is when you create this environment, it forces you to succeed. If all of your friends are millionaires, odds are you're not going to be too far off. If all your friends are super, super smart, odds are you're not going to be too far off because it forces you to catch up to their level. If all your friends are, you know, not to be mean, really, really dumb, then you don't really have many people forcing you to grow. You don't have them forcing you to be smarter. Your conversations that you have with them all the time are not going to be super complex conversations. Now, when we talk about environment, it's not just talking about friends. It's talking about everything that you do in your life, putting yourself in the positions that actually make you grow versus being in these comfort positions that we just never leave. So if you create your environment, your environment actually ends up creating you, which is what we want in the end. Now, one thing I love about this book is the core value that it talks about taking action. Taking action is gonna be one of the most important options you have in your life. Now I say option because many times we have to decide on what to do which route to take but oftentimes we just sit and like we just think about it over time and i myself am a victim to overthinking i overanalyze everything but if i don't take the action i'm literally wasting time that time could have like once i put that 
effort in, I could have already seen the results versus me just sitting here and contemplating everything I need to do. Now, I love that it talks about this. Uh, in the end, I'm also going to uh, mention similar topics on this in this last book, and it's going to be super epic. I love this book so far. Stick around. Book number three, definitely not going to be for the soft hearted. This book gives a cliche message, but not in the way it's delivered. It's definitely very vivid, not for the faint of heart. And it talks about how you can push yourself to do things that you really want to do. It's called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. If you know of David Goggins, then you know he's a Navy SEAL. This guy is actually ranked the toughest man in the world. He didn't give himself that name and then slapped it on his bio. It was actually decided this dude is hardcore. Now, I will say right now, guys, that I get audible for all of these books. Books. I always go with the audible, but this book specifically can't hurt me. Uh, he has his narrator reading the book uh, in between chapters. He has this conversation unscripted, uh, just uh, like a deep dive behind the scenes kind of conversation that really just puts it all into perspective. And he has to relive everything in this book with you kind of live. And when you hear this guy's story, honestly, for me, I'm like, wow, I am such a I, I can't complain about anything. I have it so good. I need to take advantage. Now, many people will mistake this for a motivational book. It is definitely not a motivational book. This book tells you how you can program your mind to do incredible things. And I don't want to just say the word incredible very easily, but just to give some examples without giving any spoilers in the book, I'm talking about running on broken legs, running with bloody feet, falling from the sky, bouncing off the pavement, and still getting back out there and be ready to jump out of that plane again. There's a lot of things that I can't talk about though, and I'll just stop right there because it gets very vivid and it just really puts a lot into perspective of what someone else's life can be like. And the book is not him bragging by any means. It's him just transferring his mindset of what he had to do to get out from completely hating his life to going and becoming something that he completely doubted himself on and everybody doubted him on. Now, in between chapters, there's going to be these challenges that really take you out of your comfort zone so you can stay involved. And these are not, these are not simple challenges. They really do make you feel uncomfortable. It's not like they ask you to jump into like a tub of ice, but it really helps you figure out like what you need to do to get what you want. So I'll leave that book right there. Definitely, I, I'm gonna say like huge profanity in the book. It's one extreme or the other. People love it or hate it. Uh, but if you're, you know, ex-military like myself, or maybe you just don't care about profanity, it becomes a second language after some time. So definitely good book. I cannot recommend it enough. Moving on to the fourth book. It's a short book and recommended by everybody. Uh, honestly, there's a lot of people talk about this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Let me know if you guys have read this book and what you guys think. There's actually like a, <laughs> there's a lot of, the, a lot of books in this series, but this book right here makes you think differently about money. And once you start to understand money, really the way it works and the way it flows from one person's bank account to another, and also how it differs depending on what they do, it all makes sense as to why you hear people talk about how they want to live their life completely different. His story is that he had two people treating him like a real son, one being his father, which was poor, and then the other person was just a mentor who treated him like a son, which was rich. Now, he would receive advice back and forth from both fathers, and eventually he had to make a harsh decision deciding which father's advice he would actually start to receive and which one he would need to ignore. This can relate with a lot of us because we all grow up with advice on work hard, get smart, get educated, go to college, secure yourself a job, get job security, which is what really is sold in this uh, society here in the United States at least, is definitely go to college. They push it out all the time, but no one really pushes out any other route. Now, this is where the four quadrants come in. First, we have E for the employee. This is what most people have. Then we're going to have S down below for the small business owners and self-employed. Then after that, we have the B for big business. And then we have the I for the investor. So the employee is someone who values education, someone who has a job. Now for these guys, you might hear them say stuff like, I just want a good job with good pay, good benefits, and job security. Nothing wrong with going this way. You can typically work your way up the ladder and then eventually you know, have some very good success that you can be proud of. Down below, we're gonna have the small business owner or the self-employed. Now these are the people that uh, <laughs> we hear them all the time and they say, I'm looking for a job that I can literally have control of my time or I can get paid for my skill and I can assume control and work for myself. No boss telling me what to do. 
I want to do things my way. And again, these are small business owners. Typically, we might have this myself. I think I would kind of follow this way as well uh, because I really want to create my own schedule, which is why I'm here on YouTube. But on the top right hand side, we have the big business. So typically, these are people that understand the way money works and they say, I don't necessarily want to do all the work in my job, but I want people who are smarter than me to do the work for me. You can look at these people like the orchestrators, for example, like a Steve Jobs kind of guy. Then down below, we have the investor. This is someone who says, I want to make my money grow. I want to make it work for me. So basically, they want to put their money somewhere where it starts to generate cash or cash flow. And then that's how they make their income. Now, as you start to receive all this information, what's really important, guys, is learning the difference between the middle class, the lower class and the upper class. And you start to see how the cash flow enters and exits. It's not just the numbers that change, but it's also the directions in which the flows of income or the flows of money going in and out of bank accounts that change. And it all stems down to understanding how assets and liabilities work. Many people think that a home is an asset, which many of the wealthy really disagree with that. And this book explains why. At the end of reading this book, guys, you're going to look at money differently. You're going to look at all of your expenses completely differently. And you probably won't keep calling things assets that are not actual assets. For those of you who played any sport or were in any type of competition, do you remember right before the actual competition started or the game started where you huddle up with everyone and you guys get like dead set on this mindset? You get completely into the zone, whether it needs to be focused for playing an instrument or you're on the football field and you're just like huddling up with your team and you're just getting ready to crush some people out there on the field but you have to be in the mindset you got to be in the complete state of like self-confidence in yourself before you can actually go out and perform so that's why i want to talk about this book right here the 10x rule probably my favorite book literally of all time doesn't mean that's the most important book but honestly i can read this book every single day and that's actually what happens in what's called 10X Headquarters, where the office for these guys are. This book is written by Grant Cardone. You might have seen him everywhere on social media, but uh, I have been in their office. I've been in their atmosphere, and I can tell you it is something completely different than anything I've ever experienced in my life. This book is also not a motivational book, but it solves all of the unanswered questions that you have and that you've settled on. It specifies exactly what levels of action you need to be taking and levels of effort you need to expect from yourself to achieve what you actually want to achieve. What's more important is not just achieving the goals, but actually hitting fulfillment. See, there's a lot of books out there that talk about being happy, right? This isn't that book. This is definitely a book that will help you unlock your potential and give you the right of way to do it. Going back to the magic of thinking big, it talks about creating that environment. And I couldn't be anywhere closer to creating my environment without this book, simply because it goes over all of the obstacles that you're going to encounter from within yourself and from within other people and from the economy. And if you're someone who really, really wants to go far in life and you know that you can do something like huge then this book is definitely going to help you all those famous sayings that you hear from everyone that are getting in your way that are pushing you down things like you know money doesn't grow on trees money is the root of all evil maybe even your family says hey we love you just the way you are why are you working so much success is part of the journey let it do its thing he explains how to deal with all these people that say these terms because these people are just saying these things to make themselves feel better because they've settled and they want to persuade you to do the same and one of the core values that you're going to learn in this book is that you know the abundance mentality there's no shortage of money out there and people think that you know there's not enough money out there it's the complete opposite in this book you don't have to go out there and make the money you just have to figure out a way to get it now in between the chapters of this book you have a bunch of questions that you need to answer and these are really hard questions that no one else is going to ask you in your life some examples of these questions are what are some goals you would set if you knew you could achieve them what was a time in your life where you were taking massive action and you were winning what are some cute sayings you have heard about success Success that diminish the importance of it. While reading this book, you're going to start to notice the difference between an average person and an extraordinary person. You'll also learn about four degrees of action, what that looks like, and what the results are in each stage. Now, this section here is definitely one of the most powerful things I've heard in my life. You'll start to see how so many people claim to be working 24 7, but yet they never get anywhere, versus the extraordinary person. You'll start to understand why they don't work that much, but yet they go so far. When you're done reading this book, the way that you're going to approach your goals, whether it's personal, uh, financial, anything, 
you're going to have people asking you, why are you doing this? Why are you spending so much time with this? Why don't you just relax? But in the end, if you stay on this path, they're going to come back and ask you, how did you do it? And you'll smile and you'll and you'll look back and say, you know what? It's because I read this book because I realized all the differences of an average person versus an extraordinary person. If I have a book that you love and I didn't talk about it today, drop it down in the comment section and let me know if you guys actually like this video and want to see more of it. If you do end up reading one of these books that I mentioned today, guys, come back and let me know how it actually changed your life when you're done reading it. I would very much love to hear that. I've seen some changes in my life that I cannot be thankful enough to the person, my mentor who got me into reading. Now, I cannot thank him enough, so I wanna pay it forward. Let me know what you guys think. Hope this helps out for some of you guys. See you guys next time.